Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. We have x squared minus x minus 2 quantity squared minus x cubed equals 10. And we're going to be solving for x values. What else can you solve for, right? So let's see how we can solve this problem, how we can look at it from different angles. First method. How would you solve an equation like this normally, right? You would just expand it and turn this into a quartic equation. Luckily, we have a quartic formula. By the way, you never want to use it, right? Because it's gigantic. But let's go ahead and ex expand this. I'm going to square the first three terms. It's kind of like a plus b plus c squared with some minus signs. And then we're going to do the 2ab, 2ac, and 2bc, you know, after summing the squares. That's going to give us minus 2x cubed minus 4x squared, like I multiply these and double the answer, I multiply these double the answer, and I do, that, I do it to all of the pairs. And the last one is going to be positive 4x, and then I'm going to subtract x cubed from it, and the whole thing is going to equal 10. Beautiful, right? So far. Now we have x to the fourth power, and then x cubed, if you combine like terms, you get minus 3x cubed, and then we have x squared and minus 4x squared. That's going to be a minus 3x squared. And then we have 4x, right, which is good. And then plus 4. So we've taken care of everything, but we still have a number on the right-hand side. So bring it over. And then you'll have your complete quartic equation. And 4 minus 10 is negative 6. So we'll put a minus sign there. Okay? Cool, cool. <laughs> now you have your quartic. What should you do? Well, there's a couple different ways to solve it. And one of the methods, get rid of, get rid of the um, x cubed term. And to do that, you're going to have to focus on the coefficient of x cubed, which is negative 3, right? So you're going to take something like, you know, you're going to change the variable. You're going to replace x with something like this, y minus, but that's going to turn into a plus sign, right? Plus this number divided by the degree of this. So if you replace x with y plus 3 fourths, you'll get rid of the cubic term and you're going to end up with a quartic like this. Let's just say it is, you know, after doing the manipulations, it's going to look like this, okay? Great. Now, how do you solve a quartic like this? Good question. Again, there are different ways, but one method uses, we basically throw everything We basically throw everything on the other side, leave the x to the fourth alone, and then we add something to both sides, trying to make the left-hand side a perfect square while keeping the right-hand side or making it also a perfect square. And yes, both can be done at the same time. That's the beauty of this method. I forgot what it's called, Descartes or some other guy, I don't know, hopefully someone can write it in the comment section down below, but that's how it is. But what would you add? That's the million dollar question. You should add to both sides something like this. X to the fourth will be added to 2K X squared plus K squared. You might be asking why? Because we have a fourth power and I want to add a square and we'll make it a perfect square. Why do I add a square? Why don't I add a fourth power? I could have, right? But if you look at the right-hand side, it's quadratic. If you add another quadratic, it'll still be quadratic. So we can make it a perfect square. Am I making sense? Hopefully. Anyways, let's add the same thing to both sides. So it's going to look like 2kx squared plus k squared. I'm just giving you the whole like general idea. But the left-hand side becomes this. You see, that's a perfect square. And for the right-hand side, you just need to rearrange the terms a little bit like this. And then finally, you're going to end up with something like this. So here's how it goes. This is the coefficient of x squared. This is the coefficient of x. This is your constant term. You want the radical, I mean, the quadratic on the right-hand side to be a perfect square. So its discriminant should be 0. I mean this. Because this is already a perfect square, right? 
a perfect square equals another perfect square can be solved easily because if you think about it, m squared equals n squared, you have two solutions, m equals n, m equals negative n, right? So that's easy to solve once we get to that point. But you get the idea. How do you write the discriminant from here? b squared minus 4a and c, okay? And you want it to be zero. Now notice that by expanding this, you're gonna get a cubic in k, which can be solved with the cubic formula. Again, you may need to do some, you know, reduction of the power or getting rid of some of the terms, so on and so forth, but that's the method. I'm gonna leave it at that because this is super painful. And this problem is a special type of problem which allows for multiple methods. And because this problem appeared on a math contest, of course, these are acceptable or these are expected uh, rather, right? So let me rewrite the problem. You probably know if you know me that that's gonna bug me, so I'm gonna have to erase that and rewrite it, okay? Now, we have an interesting scenario. What is that? We have, we don't have a difference of two squares. We don't have a difference of two cubes. We have the difference of a square and a cube. Can it get weirder than that? So what do we do? We don't have any formulas for anything like a squared minus b cubed, right? We don't. So instead, we should do something else. We're gonna go ahead and manipulate this equation in such a way that we can take advantage of the perfect cube and the perfect square at the same time. Okay, now how can that be done and where does that come from? You might be asking, right? I'll tell you. The clue is gonna come from 10. 10 can be broken down into nine plus one. In this case, nine will be our perfect square, okay? And one will be our perfect cube. Make sense? Now one can be square or cube, but in this case, we're gonna use it as a cube because we have x cubed, which we're gonna move to the right-hand side. We have a perfect square here on the left-hand side. We're gonna send the nine over and it'll be game over. Make sense? Okay, great, let's do it. So what I'm trying to say is subtract nine from both sides so that you can get difference of two squares. That's the whole idea. At the same time, by adding x cubed to both sides and of course leaving the one, the leftover, right? 10 minus nine is equal to one. And you're gonna end up with this scenario, which is awesome. And that was the whole purpose. How do you think they came up, the problem authors, the problem writers? How did they come up with this problem, right? They started with something like this. Of course, there's more to this than you can see at this point. But let me go ahead and explain. This is three squared, so we can kind of write this as a difference of two squares. In other words, this times this, okay? And then the right-hand side is just a sum of two cubes, which you should know the formula for, hopefully you do. It'll be x squared minus x plus one multiplied by x plus one. Now, again, you might be questioning like, how does this help at all, right? Well, you're gonna see when I simplify this. No, look, this is gonna give you x squared minus x plus one. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a solution because we have the same thing. Great, so that gives you what you're looking for. That's the whole secret, the secret sauce I already gave you. But let's go ahead and finish it up. What am I gonna do next? I'm gonna put this stuff on the left-hand side, and of course, we're gonna have a common factor, which makes it factorable, and then everything will collapse, okay? Let's go ahead and do the mechanics, finish it up, because this is really cool. I really love this method, the idea, but this is equal to zero now. Notice that this is a common factor, so we're gonna take it out, x squared minus x plus one, multiply by this minus this, so hopefully you can figure that out, x squared minus x minus x, that's gonna be x squared minus two x, minus five minus one is gonna be minus six, and now you have the factors. Who would have thought that our expression originally would be factored like this? You can go ahead and check the expression we got with the first method, how cumbersome, right? Well, you could try rational root theorem, maybe that would get you to the result a little faster, right, maybe, but this method is still my favorite, but let me know what you think. But from here, the rest is easy. You're gonna solve each equation. Well, the first equation has a negative delta, which means it's gonna give you complex solutions. Normally, in this channel, we deal with real numbers because I have another channel that deals with complex numbers that focuses on complex numbers. I made a bunch of lecture videos. Go ahead and check it out. 
And let me know what you think. Maybe you already know that, right? But A plus BI is what you need to check next. Let's go ahead and solve the equation anyways. X is going to be from here, negative B, plus minus the square root of B, B squared minus 4AC. That's going to be a root 3i divided by 2. Did you recognize it? Of course you should because those are the cube roots of negative 1. But complex cube roots of negative 1. Okay, great. Now the other solutions are going to be more straightforward. If you want, you can use the quadratic formula or you can add 1 to both sides and take advantage of how quadratic formula was derived which is completing the square. And this is really cool. I think this method is better than memorizing a formula, don't you think? This is going to give us plus minus root 7. And with the addition of 1, we're going to get the other solution. So, a cortic with four solutions, two real, two non-real. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI and bye bye.